Today we're looking at the trail hand at impact. I'm going to share with you a few things you can do at home or on the range that are going to make a big difference. So would it be okay if I share with you these secrets and tell you the detail around how the right wrist would work and impact? I want to share with you the things that I would commonly use with players that enter into my studio that make a real difference, that really make a difference to their ball striking and their ability to hit better shots. If you're new to the channel, please follow or subscribe, hit my logo down the bottom corner. I'd love to help you on your journey to play better. So I want to discuss today the trail hand through impact and really answering the question that was posted in the comments section within another video. So please make sure you post questions down below or request for videos. What I want to talk about is really the best players in the world tend to get into this kind of shape at impact. They have a lot of what we call shaft lean. They have obviously body conditions going on also. But if I achieve that shaft lean, if you look at my trail hand now, it has some element of extension to it. It has some element of rotation to it. And it is pointing generally more or less down towards the ground in front of the golf ball. Now, if I was a flipper of the golf ball, you see my trail hand that points more up into the sky. And if I had a fairly neutral sharp position at impact, my trail hand is pretty horizontal and parallel to the stick I have on the ground. So in an ideal world, we'd want the hand to be facing down towards the ground at impact. So if I imagine I'm gonna throw a ball at that object, at that ball on the ground, you'll see my trail hand has this kind of shape. So it has extension, not flexion. It faces the ground. I try and feel that my lower forearm is kind of ahead of my hand. And if we look at the hand and put it into what I call max range extension, that would be a great feel to have. So the knuckles here are coming back to the forearm as much as we possibly can. Now to stop the ball then going right, we have to add a little bit of rotation with the body and with the arms for sure. If I just go into max range extension, you'll see that the face opens up. If I then give it some rotation and the rotation is happening with the lead arm, the trail arm and the wrists, get that face square up. Now to hit a straight shot, we need the club face to be fractionally open at the point of contact and square at the point of separation. The ball sticks to the face for about three thousandths of a second with an iron shot. So during that interval, basically, contact, interval, we want that face to square itself up. So we definitely want to feel that there is rotation through the hitting zone, but we don't want to have wire class as a flappy action through the hitting zone. Now we're losing control of what the club is doing. The club heads are overtaking the hands, we're increasing the loft, and we're also encouraging ourselves to have poor contact with that. So we definitely want to have this pressured contact, the ball and turf contact, by achieving shaft lean. And also we want the rotation to make sure we hit straight shots. So the, the, the field, how can we take this to a golf swing? For me, I would do a lot of rehearsals where I'm trying to feel this shape. And at the same time, I'd be trying to measure the ground to get the club to just interact with the ground, ideally at the ball or just after, just after would be ideal. And then start to think about how I facilitate that. So my body is turning, body is extending to facilitate that. And the next phase would be obviously hitting some short shots doing the same swing. And then I'd build up. So I'd start with some mini swings, trying to keep this position and then start to add more and more rotation to it as I would go along. So we're trying to feel that pressure, that right wrist in that max extension, the right wrist facing the ground, and even having the exercise of, you know, if I want to throw the ball there, that's the feel with the right arm. So it goes from a bent condition, bent condition, bent condition, to a straight condition. And I likened it to throwing a ball, or I likened it to throwing a punch. If you were gonna throw a punch, you wouldn't want to hit someone with a straight arm all your power has gone. We want the arm to be straightening, but bent. So almost at this fully extended state, same as when we hit a golf ball. The lead arm's gonna be extended, obviously. The trail arm's gonna be firing in such a way like this. So it's almost like a piston type shape. We wanna feel that happens through the hitting zone as best we can. So I do a lot of this throwing action to develop that. That can be very useful to do in the garden. We also want to feel, potentially, our forearms feel like they're squeezing together at the lower half. So placing even, I have one here. This is a, a cut tennis ball, but it's a tennis ball all the same. Placing like a tennis ball between your lower forearms, and it's not easy to get in place. I feel that we would squeeze that 
to that hitting zone is a great way of feeling these positions in the golf swing that we would want. So once we felt that, then it's about going ahead and hitting the shot. As I said, the hitting section would be small swings and building up. Let's just go ahead and just hit a small one here now. And hold that finish as long as you can. And if you look there, I've still got my hand pretty much in that extension state there. And the shot was lovely and straight. It was ball and turf, not huge divot, but ball and turf. And I could feel the pressure and the strike was exactly where I'd want it to be. So the key then would be building from that into bigger swings, adding more, ideally, body work, more rotation with the body, more extension with the body. And then from there, allowing that then to make the swing go into its full state, its full flow and its full action. But I would suggest that all of you, if you start hitting these mini swings, particularly as a warm up before you play, it would improve your ball striking no end. I would pretty much guarantee that. Get to find measuring the ground, get to find the center of the contact, and get to find these risk conditions, and you will become a better player for sure. You'll control the ball flight, you'll get these penetrating iron shots, and you will get ball and turf all the time. So there you have it. The keys to the trail wrists are impact, getting that max extension range if you can. I don't think you can overdo that. As long as you add in rotation to it, there's no drawbacks. If you don't add the rotation, you might hit some shots to the right. But I would implore you to try and almost hit low shots to the right in practice doing this, and then see what your natural state is. Because far too many golfers would have this flipping action through impact rather than the, the wrist conditions I'm talking about. So the more we can feel that we overdo this, the better.